Hello my friends, Mac here. If you've been following along with our videos up until now, you probably know that we recently sold our 4x4 Sun Raider in favor of something small, modern, and 4x4 capable. If you are not familiar with what I'm talking about, I've included a link so you can check out the build series. It's pretty interesting. I highly recommend it. Allow me to introduce to you our new 2008 4x4 Toyota Tacoma named Lando. In this video, we're gonna be going over the specifics of how we built our very modest home in just three days and less than $400. You might not have the same truck as us, but I think that that's fine. The overall idea and concept can probably be applied to any truck out there. And as a quick side note, we did purchase this truck with the camper shell as well as the roof rack system already installed. All right, as always, let's get to building. After a quick scrub down in the bed of the truck, we dove straight into planning the overall design and footprint of our home in the bed of Lando. We did this by taping out the bed of the truck on the floor so we could work backwards from there. I know this seems like a really low tech way of coming up with our design, but we really wanted to make sure that all of our belongings were gonna be able to fit into the space that we are allowing for. This is what we came up with. Our plan was to build a bed platform that would rest on the top of the wheel wells. Under the bed would be home to two locking drawers that would run the entire length of the bed. In an effort to not waste a single inch of space, we designed the back right corner of the bed platform to lift away and give us access to the space behind the wheel well. Last but not least, we wanted to build a small shelf to sit on top of the driver's side wheel well for regularly used items such as toiletries and toothbrushes. With the design complete, we went straight into building the whole structure, including the side supports. Once the overall frame was constructed, it was really easy to figure out the measurements from there. The width of the drawers also took into account the square tubing that we were later gonna be using as our drawer rails. We cut the sides of the drawers with regularly spaced dados. Dados are slots in the surface of the wood, and these would allow us to add any dividers to the drawers once the whole thing was constructed. After the drawers were built, we cut down all four square tubing rails down to the length of the drawers. Once the drawers were completed, it was the first time we were able to see our usable space take shape. We spent some time trying out different configurations of our belongings, so we knew how many drawer dividers needed to be made to work with our final layout. We decided to use T-handles for our drawers. These are great because they give us the option of locking the drawers in the event we ever felt like we needed to. We really like this style of latch because you can tell at a glance if the drawer is actually closed or not. We cut holes in each of the drawer fronts and applied a thick coat of black spray paint to the fronts to give them a cleaner look. Once the paint had dried, we riveted the latches into place The first step in installing our slider system was determining what our square tubing was actually going to slide on. And for that, we decided to go with skateboard wheel bearings, 48 of them to be exact. We installed 12 bearings per side in an alternating pattern that can be seen in these images. We did this to be sure that the drawers are being supported on the top and bottom by the sliders when the drawer is fully deployed. We attached the wheel bearings to the frame using a whole bunch of nuts and bolts and washers. Once the wheel bearings were in place, we screwed the square tubing into the sides of our drawers. Once our entire slider system was in place, we were able to install our drawers into the frame. Once we saw that everything was looking right, we went back in and installed the drawer faces and latches. By waiting until this step in the process, we were able to be sure that the drawer faces were lining up perfectly with each other and our drawer frame. We also painted the visible portions of our drawer system just to show we care, a little. Once our drawers were fully in place, we installed a drawer stopper just to be sure that our drawers would never come out all the way. It was a really important step to ensure that our whole drawer system was going to stay in place once we got on the road. So the way that we secured them was using the two bolts in the back of our truck bed that hold the liner in place. We use those guys to hold the whole system down. Though we don't have any pictures of this step in the process, it was an important one because we didn't want to let all of our hard work go to waste. 
Once our drawer system was safely secured in the truck, it was time to start building out the actual bed platform. We cut down each piece to size and screwed it into place. Once the entire bed platform was completed, we covered the whole thing in cork just to protect our mattress once it also arrived. We used Sunbrella fabric and Velcro to make our curtains so we could have privacy no matter where we are parked. The reason why we decided to use Velcro to attach our curtains is that our pre-existing camper shell conveniently came lined in a felted fabric. The overall design of the curtains was super simple. They were just rectangles to ensure that each window was covered. The back hatch was a little trickier because it was a trapezoid shape to cover the rear hatch. After the curtains were done, I moved on to cutting large sheets of bug net to fit over our vent windows as well as one large one for over the rear hatch in the event that we wanted to sleep with it open on the hot nights of summer. Now that our home is starting to take shape in the bed of Lando, we realized that we had a huge dead zone of wasted space over the driver's side wheel well. Our solution was to build a small little shelf that wedged perfectly into that space so we could store easily accessible small items that we would use on a day-to-day -day basis. This is the final step in this whole operation. We ordered a mattress topper that was larger than our final area because we wanted to have the ability to cut it down to size. And that's exactly what we did. We used a large steak knife to cut it down to shape before we installed it into our home in Lando. And just like that, our build in Lando is complete. In total, it took a little bit over a weekend to complete and exactly $393. If you're interested in a detailed write-up that we put together on this exact build, and a full parts list of everything that we used in the process, I'll add a link in the description below. The reason why we love this setup so much is because it was really cheap and easy to build. It gives a world of opportunity to people to go out as weekend warriors or long-term travelers like ourselves. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you found this video helpful. Next time, we'll be giving you a tour of this setup in its completed state, and also giving you some thoughts on our experiences with it now that we've been living in it for the last six months. Thanks so much, guys, and see you down the road.